So we have uh, Martin Wenhardt from Slovak Academy of Sciences uh, connected to, to Zoom. And so uh, it, it's clear that uh, during this short afternoon, we cannot cover, cover all the experiments done in CERN and all the activities. But still, this uh, Atlas and Alice were the, the major, major experiment at CERN. But uh, Martin from Slovakia, from Slovak Academy of Sciences, will uh, tell us about other experiments which we can enjoy doing in CERN. So, Martin, try to speak uh, whether we can re listen to your voice. Yes, okay, wonderful. And share, please, your, your presentation. I will stop my. Okay. Can see my slides, please? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So, so I can start now. Okay. Uh, very good. So greetings to Prague. I'm very sorry that I cannot be with you, but I, I got most probably COVID. So I'm sorry it's a little bit difficult for me to, to speak. So maybe if sometimes I will need to make a little break to to drink something. Okay, so uh, as it was introduced, I'm going to speak a little bit about the non-LHC experiments and about our contribution uh, of uh, Czech, Czech and Slovak groups to, to these experiments. So, uh, of course, uh, probably everybody knows uh, this picture. So this is an accelerator infrastructure at, at CERN. Of course, the flagship uh, is LHC with its uh, four uh, experiments. However, the LHC is using about uh, less than 1% of the protons that are produced at the, uh, at the ion source, if this information is, uh, is still, still valid. Uh, so to use the rest of the protons, a uh, whole variety of experiments appeared. And today I'm going to speak about the ENTOF experiment about uh, Isolde uh, radioactive ion beam facility. And the third important experiment uh, is uh, NA62, where we have a major contribution. However, I'm not going to discuss it today. Uh, I requested the uh, slides and, uh, and the materials from uh, my colleagues to, due to the reason which I don't know. Uh, I don't know, uh, I didn't get it. So most probably it's beginning of, of semester. So that's the only reason why I, I, I won't be discussing it. Uh, uh, oh, okay, so the, so the first, uh, first is, uh, there is a neutron time of flight uh, facility. So uh, it, is, uh, it is using the proton, uh, proton beam from, uh, from, uh, P, uh, from a proton synchrotron which hits the pure let's palation target uh, with about uh, 10 to 12 protons in each pulse and with about the three neutrons uh, produced per each uh, by each proton and uh, neutrons uh, neutrons from the from the target uh, cover uh, their energies cover <laughs> excuse me <laughs> 11 orders of magnitude in energy from uh, milli electron volts up to giga electron volts. And the main aim uh, is the measurement of neutron induced cross sections on different isotopes, for example, for, for the nucleosynthesis, where uh, neutrons are extremely important. So I invite you to read the famous B BWHF uh, paper on the, on the stellar nucleosynthesis. Then for the reactor physics and uh, nuclear waste disposals and other uh, other um, uh, other topics. So there are presently three uh, measurement stations. So I have here two. So you have the proton, uh, uh, the lead target, which is hit by the proton beam, and then you have uh, 185 meters long neutron flight path. So where you do the time of flight, you have defined the beginning when the proton pulse hits it, and then the neutrons flies. And by the time of flight, you can separate them by the, by the energy. 
So what is interesting that for low energy elect uh, neutrons, they fall by the gravity by something like five centimeters on this long flight path. Another beam line installed, neutron line installed in 2011, which is much closer, 20 meters. Uh, so, you know, for those who have experience with the neutron flight, time of flight experiments, uh, you either can have a, can have a energy resolution or you can have a, have a, um, a high efficiency. You never can have both. So the idea of this uh, second uh, second measurement station is to increase by factor of 35 compared to uh, number of neutrons. On, on your target compared to long uh, long uh, beam line or neutron line. Uh, so there is third, very recently has been installed a near, a near uh, the, uh, measurement station, which is located very close to the LED target. And that means that you have a very huge uh, neutron, uh, neutron yield there. And uh, this is to perform activation measurements relevant for nuclear astrophysics, for example, or irradiation various metals. So uh, let's say the test of ra radiation hardness. So what is uh, uh, contribution of the, of the Czech Republic here? Slovakia is not a member and to my knowledge, nobody actively participates from, uh, from uh, Slovak institutions. So the, the membership has been established uh, in 2004, led by František Bečváš. And the present status is that uh, more than 120 in total physicists are involved in end of collaboration and the Prague group as a free people. So you can, you can uh, read the names led by Milan Kartička. And the main contributions from, uh, from Prague group is a participation on analysis of data from M and gamma reactions and uh, specifically on the uh, using, uh, using deuterated benzene detector that is a low efficiency scintillation detector and also the analysis of uh, gamma gamma coincidences from uh, from uh, highly efficient uh, barium fluoride scintillated detectors you can see see it in, in the picture so there is very close connection between entof and uh, isolde uh, uh, they have uh, they have common uh, common uh, program advisory committee which is called INTC, which approves a beam time. So, uh, so I mentioned this all there. So, what is the radioactive? Uh, it's radioactive ion beam facility, which is active at CERN since 1964, and since 1992, it operates at the PS booster accelerator, and it provides low energy and post accelerated radioactive ion beams. So. Uh, Rex is all the accelerator can accelerate post accelerate radioactive ion beam up to three MeV per nucleon and high is all the up to 10 MeV per nucleon and high is all the is also the high intensity upgrade. Not only high energy, but also high intensity. And it covers a large variety of experiments from nuclear structure, nuclear reactions, the astrophysics, but also solid state physics, molecular biology and genetics. Slovakia is full member since 2016, and there are definitely many activities from Slovakia. It is all there, including uh, uh, Slovak University of Technology, uh, Slovak Academy of Sciences, and the Comenius uh, University, and also permanent CERN staff members are also uh, involved uh, and uh, significantly contributing to, to Isolde. So for the for for the short shortest of the time, I have selected only two topics today, which I will cover from uh, from Isolde. So let's see how the beam is produced at Isolde. So it's a it is the target, which is a massive metal target, hits by 1.4 GeV protons, which by the processes like uh, fission, uh, spallation, or fragmentation. Uh, produces a variety of radioactive species, which due to high temperature effusing into, into ion source, where they are ionized to one plus state and then extracted by, by uh, potential. So, and we have a pulsed radioactive ion beam because it follows the, especially for short lived species, it follows uh, the, the superstructure of the proton beam. 
So, and then basically what we do, we do the mass separation and uh, there are, at the end, it's a beam of a single isotope. So there are the ways how to, in the ion stores, how to uh, ionize only isotopes of one element. There are several of, of them. So, what's wrong? This we have seen already. Okay, so. The first topic that I want to cover is the structure of a weak interaction in nuclear beta decay, where uh, Dalibor Zakowski from Rzesz is active and uh, Andrei Antushek and his colleague from, colleagues from Slovak University of Technology in Trnava are active and they are focusing for the search of, for possible scalar and tensor interaction that are beyond the standard model and experiments that is all that these are low energy experiments, which is a complement to uh, LHC experiments. And the two that is, that is used is low energy beta decay, which is a higher sensitivity to possible uh, scalar and tensor contribution. So other topic is a precise measurement of nuclear magnetic moments. And there are very important interdisciplinary experiments, which are done in a collaboration with my very good friend and colleague, Magdalena Kowalska, who was ERC starting grant laureate in the, in the, near, in the near past. So what they are using is either Wizard setup, which is used for beta neutrino correlation. Of course, it's extremely difficult to detect neutrino that therefore indirect measurements are needed. So what is done, the, the precision measurement of the, of the scalar component is via the Doppler, Doppler energy shift of a beta delayed protons emitted in the decay of argon 32. So what are beta delayed protons? So if you have a beta decay, your daughter nucleus can stay in highly excited state, which is above the, above the uh, neutron, neutron, se separ separ neutron separation energy. And uh, and uh, the neutron is uh, sorry proton is emitted. Uh, so uh, it is using the the cryostat with uh, within the nine Tesla superconducting magnet where you uh, where you put uh, into the catcher foil uh, radioactive thirty two argon ions from Isolde. Other is uh, other setup is the veto setup at Isolde, which is using correlation of nuclear spin and momentum of beta particle. So they're using polarized, uh, a laser polarized Isolde beam on a new beam line and implanting into sample in uh, superconducting for Tesla magnet. And uh, uh, very recent, uh, recently approved experiments are aimed on the uh, on the beta asymmetry parameter and the beta gamma correlations of, uh, of polarized nuclei. And what is very interesting is the interaction of uh, sodium and potassium ion with uh, DNI G quadruplex structures. The G quadruplex structures are structures in, uh, in the DNA, which are highly enriched of uh, guanine. And uh, uh, and uh, studies of chemical and biological samples using beta NMR, which is 10 to six times more sensitive than the classical uh, NMR. So the group at the Slovak Academy of Sciences is focusing on the uh, nuclear structure of Odmas gold isotopes. And we are pursuing this program at uh, three different laboratories. So it's the University of Vascula. In Finland, uh, Itemba Labs in Cape Town and Isolde, which is the main topic uh, topic today. So, and uh, uh, what I want to stress that in all these laboratories, uh, people from our group are spokespersons. So we are successful in gaining the beam time, both at Isolde and in the Vascula, and in the past it was in edit also uh, at Itemba. The collaboration is now a little bit uh, sleeping, I would say. And uh, this would not be possible without, uh, without excellent teams. So this is the list of the people at the Institute of Physics of Slovak Academy of Sciences. Not all of them are there presently, but very significantly contributed. And those who left already are with, with the italics. And uh, what we are especially proud is this uh, in the middle column. These are postdocs at the top and the students, uh, students below 
So our group is very attractive in, uh, in attracting the students. So these are students of all levels, bachelor, uh, master, and uh, graduate students. So the, the students that are active right now are in both. And what is interesting that we have, uh, we have more young ladies as students. So only Andrei Špaček is the only, only male student in the moment with a girl, Nur Kanta, it's a, it's a lady from, a young lady from Kazakhstan who is our PhD student. So, and every year we have a bunch of summer students from France, UK, Spain, Belgium, and Brazil. We have, for example, very good uh, uh, collaboration with the uh, Felma University in Grenoble in, in France. And last summer we had six students for three months at the Institute of, uh, of Physics. And uh, what we are studying at this all day or in other laboratories, these are multiple shapes in atomic nuclei, which is the key, appears to be a key issue of nuclear structure. So the shape coexistence uh, is this appearance of multiple shapes in a single isotope. It is known since 1969 uh, when it was used by Morinaga to describe the first excited state in, in oxygen 16. Many of you probably know the most illustrative example is a holy, holy state in, uh, in carbon-12. But in, in general, before, the multiple shapes meant two shapes. However, the very recent result in stable cadmium isotopes shows that they are not vibrational and they are showing multiple shapes. And the gold isotopes are excellent tool for study of nuclear shapes, both axial and triaxial. And it can be addressed through the beta decay of Odmas gold precursor. So what's the idea of our experiment? So we implanted the radioactive ion beam. Here, I want to stress that we are not using a cocktail beam. These are for each isotope we have separate run. So as soon as we have a sample, we move it to, to measurement position where we measure gamma rays and conversion electrons emitted by the by the beta decay. So and this setup is called Tatra from the tape transportation. And it's based on, uh, on eight track tapes. Uh, maybe not everybody knows what the eight track tapes were. I refer to Google. It's very nice uh, piece of engineering, which was used for video and the music recording in 70s. And instead of conventional tape, we, used, we are using rapidly quenched material and the metallic glass, which is called metallic glass. So, and then, therefore we can operate the system at very low pressure, uh, which, is, uh, which is very good for this kind of systems. I don't say that this is the world record in the vacuum, but in similar system, it's really very good. And that's why we can, can reach very good uh, resolution for conversion electrons. And for gamma rays, we used for the first time a broad energy germanium detector, and uh, I'm not going to talk about it. I will show you some spectra. So this is the gamma ray spectrum of 183 mercury decay with excellent uh, P-type uh, germanium detector with 1.9 keV resolution at the cobalt line. So, and this is the same spectrum measured with the Beige. So this is the conventional, this, uh, this is the Tatra system. And it's not only the detector, but it's also electronics and our instrumentation. So, uh, the resolution is on a completely different planet, which is important for these isotopes because they have very high density of excited states and uh, uh, not insufficient resolution was the reason why all the groups uh, before us failed to, in studies of these, these isotopes. And um, uh, this methodology, we are very proud that last year it appeared in a, in a nuclear physics textbooks. Uh, issued by Institute of Physics in, in UK. And uh, it, sci it shows the spectra, which I have shown as an example of innovation in, uh, in the gamma ray spectroscopy. So I can skip this. So what are the future prospects of the Tatra system? So electrons with uh, low energies uh, below one keV needs to be detected. So we cannot do it with the existing system. And uh, so we, are, we want to start a new development and uh, they need to be detected in coincidence with the gamma ray. So no one, to my knowledge, has succeeded with uh, to design such system before uh, at the radioactive ion beam facility. So there was a system at this old in the past that was able to detect these conversion electrons, but only in a single small, not in a coincidence with, with the gamma rays. 
So, and such system may have a serious impact to the nuclear structures because there are probably many unknown transitions in the nuclei of very low energies and without them, we may be, be very misled and it may have impact also to nuclear medicine because in the future, Osher therapy might be possible. It's widely discussed now within nuclear medicine communi community and there is not enough, uh, enough data. It's one of the IAEA topics now uh, are low energy electrons. And this design is not possible with existing funding that is available in Slovakia. So that's why we are working hard to get the ERC grant. So the previous application got a B, uh, which was uh, in that year, that was the only B from uh, Slovakia with one referee that was not positive enough. Three other referees were, were extremely positive. However, we got very uh, valuable the input from this referee from his report, which is very fair. And we are now preparing uh, resubmission. And to achieve this goal, uh, the, my group has been supported by, by asset uh, foundation, by, by grant from the private sources. And uh, uh, I come to the very end. So uh, this year, the, our group has been awarded by award of Slovak Academy of Sciences. So you see the core of the group with the, with the president uh, of the Slovak Ac Academy of Sciences. And also we received a letter from uh, president in 2016 after first uh, completion of, uh, of the run at, at, uh, of our first run at Isolde. And of course, it is always, uh, always uh, polite to thank to all funding agencies that have been supporting our our research for for many years and uh, and uh, I already mentioned the asset foundation so this is all what I wanted to say and thank you very much for your attention